Uh, today we're going to be making Paralam beams for furniture. Uh, one of the things we get asked a lot is how we went along and put color into all the cracks. It's a hard, very hard material to work with. So we're actually going to show you that entire process, starting with um, uh, how the way we sand the initial piece, um, the way we put color into the putty, the way we put the putty onto the wood, and then how we actually sand the wood to um, not open up new voids, because that's one of the tricky things about Paralam beans. Clint spent, on our first job, he spent hundreds of hours uh, trying to figure out how to sand the beams in such a way where you put the putty in and then you start sanding and not open up new voids because the, the material is just full of voids. The, the way Paralam beams are made is it's uh, particles of wood compressed together with a resin. And when they compress this together, because it's a structural element, not a finished uh, wood product, uh, you know, for making furniture or something like that, they don't care about the voids. They don't care about the look. It's normally buried in structure. So what we do is we take the structural element and turn it into something that we can use for furniture. Because so right now, we've got these three done. We've got an orange one, a blue one, and a green one. It started out looking like this. This is a three and a half by five and a quarter parallel beam. All right, so first thing we start off with, since we're doing small quantities, we have already figured out the ratio of color we need for uh, getting the putty to where we need it. Um, right now we're just gonna do a red one, so we're not actually mixing colors. These are uh, gambling, dry pigments. You can get them at any uh, art store. You can get them online in bulk. We bought these from Dick Blick here in town. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, if you look at these, if you look at these here, as they're drying out, you can see the difference between the dark and the light. This is where it's been dried. Same with the blue. You see the dark and the light. This is where it's already dried. This is where it's still wet. And what happens is as the colors dry out, um, it lightens up. But as soon as you put a clear coat over the finish, it darkens back up to uh, what, what the color was when you initially did the wet putty mix. So whatever the putty mix looks like is basically um, the color you're going to have in the end after you spray it with a uh, clear coat. Okay, so what we're doing here you should definitely take precautions when working with this stuff in bulk. It's, uh, it contains cadmium, which is known to cause cancer. So wearing a respirator and safety glasses and gloves when you're doing big, huge quantities of it is very important. I'm doing four teaspoons. Was that four? We're doing four teaspoons, and then we're going to see what it looks like and may add a fifth. Some colors require five teaspoons. Some colors require four for this ratio that we're going to do here today. Um, I then add two thirds of a cup of Durham's rock hard water putty. Uh, the reason we use this instead of some of the other wood fillers, because you can buy just regular wood filler and uh, dye it whatever color you want with the aniline dye or whatever. But the reason we use this is because it's water soluble. So we're able to get the less expensive water soluble uh, dyes, dry dyes, and use those for the projects. If you're using the aniline dyes and some of the things that need to be um, mixed in oils or uh, solutions, it gets a lot more expensive. So now we have a little bit of water. One thing Clint and I have, uh, figured out recently is that you have to have a, uh, a fairly wet mix for this process. So, a little bit of water. We mix the powders together first and then we add the water. One of the reasons I do that is so that the powder isn't able to dissipate into the air with uh, a breeze or wind or moving it. I put the color in first and then I cover it with Durham's and then I put the water on top of that and that keeps the dust down. Once the color has been suspended in water, oil, anything like that, once it's no longer dry, it is no longer a hazard, we're probably going to want to add 
another scoop of red. Add a little bit more water, just a tiny bit. You'd be surprised how little water you need for this process. All right, looks like we're almost there. If you start getting into larger projects where uh, you know you're doing like an entire bar or something, it's, you're going to need four or five guys because this stuff dries so fast. You need a couple people applying and one person troweling. So I try to fill the deepest cracks the way I'm doing here, just so it really gets down in there. And then let the uh, putty knife push it into all the smaller cracks as Clint goes along. It's really important to get on this first pass to really get it um, on all, 100% of the surface. Because there's gonna be little tiny cracks that you're not gonna see until later. And we found this saves a lot of time, just being able to cover the entire thing really, really thinly with one coat of putty. So Clint's making it look easy, but there's actually a trick to troweling this stuff on. So like I was saying, Clint's make, making this look easy, but it's a, there's a trick to putting this stuff on. You kind of want to go, it's like painting. You want to go two directions to make sure it really fills those cracks in. If you just went, you know, long strokes like this, it wouldn't actually push the putty down into the cracks the way you need it to. And you just have to do this whole thing again later. See how he comes in and he pushes it this way and then he spreads it out. That's uh, actually pushing it down to the cracks much deeper. So we also hit the ends of this because the end grain has all the gaps or all the voids as well. So as you can see, we hit almost 100% of the surface on all sides. Yeah, it's a little bit material intensive and time intensive, but it does save you a lot of time later on. So the next step in the process is to sand the putty off after it dries. As you can see, we went ahead and did it to the orange one, the blue one, and the green one. Um, we're getting ready to start the, the red one. Once you start sanding, um, it opens up new little voids. So basically we got all the, uh, the majority of the voids filled and in the process of sanding, we opened up new ones. So after sanding, the next step is to go through and strategically fill those and only sand those spots. Don't sand the entire thing again because otherwise we'll just open up more voids and it never ends. So that's the trick is to figure out how to sand these. You can see these ones are fairly large voids um, and those weren't there when we filled it the first time. One thing to keep in mind is uh, now that the dry dye has been mixed with the putty and has um, dried again it is now once again hazardous so during sanding it's very important to wear a respirator and glasses and gloves <clears throat> clint's about to start sanding and i'm going to go ahead and put my respirator on so you can see it takes quite a while but once you get through the putty it just leaves the uh, deeper voids. Okay, so the next step is to uh, fill in any voids that occurred because of sanding with uh, just a tiny bit of the putty. So you can see it, we did it on these first three. 
and we're getting ready to do it on this one here on the red one okay so basically we look for the tiny little voids like this one here that were opened up during sanding here's a here's a good example of one that wasn't there at all before we sanded so we're gonna go ahead and start filling those in now with as little putty as we can possibly use because we don't want to do a lot of sanding later remember every time you sand you open more voids So once it's done, you should have the rest of the voids that you either created by sanding or the ones you missed with the first pass should be filled. And then we're going to let this dry a few minutes and then we will go ahead and uh, sand those off strategically and we'll show you how we do that as well. So now we're gonna go ahead and sand these out now that it has dried. One of the things to keep in mind is we're using a much finer grit sandpaper. So even though it looks like we're sanding everywhere, we're only really taking material off in the places where he's putting pressure. Um, and that's important so that we're not sanding the entire surface of this because again, parallel beams have voids all the way through and uh, we want to avoid opening up any new ones because every time you open up a new one you have to do this step uh, again and again until it's finished all right go ahead So we are applying a water-based polyurethane for these sample pieces. Um, we actually recommend an oil-based polyurethane for any type of furniture work or bar tops or anything like that that you're going to use this process for. Uh, Clint's going to show you how we apply a clear coat using a rag. Um, also on a normal project we would spray this on and uh, the spray actually works a little bit better because we're able to um, not smear the color because it is water-based and we're using a water-based uh, sealant it's very easy to smear the color across the wood if it bleeds off of the uh, putty so we have to be careful not to do that but at the same time um, we're not going to go bust out the big spray rig for this. So, uh, again, we're using a water based polyurethane uh, semi gloss for this. And if you watch, Clint first dabs it on. You can see how it immediately pops. The color immediately comes back. It's super red. And he's dabbing it so that it doesn't smear the red. You can see how beautiful that looks immediately. And right away you can see the difference between the depth of that red and over here where we haven't done it yet, how it's still almost a pink color. It's also important to seal all sides of the wood if you just do put sealant on the exposed parts um, and you don't seal the bottom, what will happen is the wood will eventually start to take on or lose moisture, which can cause cracking and warping. Um, and that's because it's, it's losing moisture or taking on moisture unevenly. If you seal all six sides, uh, it allows the material to weather evenly so even though we didn't sand or we, I mean we did a rough sand on the bottom initially but we haven't touched the bottom with any type of uh, 
putty or any of the finer sand papers that we've used on all the other sides, we're still going to go ahead and just put a nice little coat of that on there. And then after this coat, we'll go ahead and let it dry here in Las Vegas. It's so um, hot and dry here that clear coats dry very, very quickly. So what we're going to do is we're going to let the clear coat dry. And then we're going to hit it with either uh, double lot, the, the finest um, steel wool we can find, or the finest sandpaper. So there it is. Almost done. One more sand. And then one more coat of clear coat and we'll be finished. I don't know if you can tell the difference between this and the red, but that's actually an orange and it's very, very orange in person. And there's the blue. The blue really, really pops. So here we are, we uh, did our final sand. We just very, very quickly and lightly used the sander with 320 grit sandpaper. And very, very quickly went over each one. Um, we've already done final coats on these three. We're getting ready to do the final coat on this one. So basically what you wanna do, once you're on the final coat, is fairly, you want to put on a fairly thick coat and you'll notice when you're putting it on that it glides over real nice and smooth because it's already been sanded and you no longer have to worry about bleeding because it's uh it's already been sealed with your first coat once i get this final coat on i'll usually Go over it a couple of times just to kind of get a thicker coat on there. Also to smooth out the air bubbles because you're definitely, if you're wiping a finish on, there's definitely going to be air bubbles. There's a couple of ways to pop them. You can use a torch, you can blow on them. But I, uh, I just like to put a nice thick coat on and let them pop themselves while I'm wiping it. Um, one thing we did that I forgot to mention is we mixed, because we're wiping and not spraying, and not, even when you're spraying you want to do this, but I, I mixed uh, about 25% or three to one ratio. I put water into this water-based polyurethane to thin it out, and that allows it to flow nice and deep into the uh, pores of the wood and also makes it a little bit easier to uh, finish by hand. And we'll let them dry and see where we're at. There's a possibility we might want to put one more coat on, but we're probably good. 